Hi, um, today is Thursday, and I am in the process right now of teaching a class called God's Will is to Heal. And I recorded myself, and I'm going to record it right now so that you might hear one of the classes. And the title of this is Anxiety, Depression, and God. And so I'm going to set this up right now, and it's a little bit of a longer message, so you might um, need to take a break in between, but I do hope you really listen to it and grasp all that God really gave me in this message to share with you. Um, and then at the end, it, it will stop kind of abruptly, and my next recording, which will be in the next uh, few days, will be the continuation of it. All right? Okay, so here we go. Again, I'm Sally Briggs, and I'm glad you're here. Even if it's your first time, I hope you enjoy this. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start. So today is the third, um, the third week of our class about God's will is to heal. And so I want to review some of that, but before I go there, I just, I felt like God really showed me a couple of things um, this week in my own life that I want to share. And it didn't occur to me until late this afternoon that I really do believe the scripture, Romans 8, 28, that, that all things do work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called to their purpose, to his purpose. Um, for me, I just, I had a really bad week. <laughs> And it was nothing that was happening in my, in the external parts of my lives or with anybody um, other than my internal insides emotions. And so what I feel like God showed me, the Holy Spirit today, was that this, he's using for good because he wants me to share with all of you. Because, and that's how God works, which is so awesome. And he says, you know, the comfort that, that God, that he will give to us through whatever trial we're going through is that same comfort that we're going to be able to give to someone else. And so our trials will never be for no purpose if we're willing to share them. So I realized that, that God was putting me in a position and, or allowing me to be in a position this week in order that I had a choice to either share it or to not, to keep it in my own little secrets because we do that sometime because we don't want to look like we're messed up people when really we're all kind of messed up, you know, but we, we just don't want people to know that. And especially if we're in positions to be speaking to others or, or like where I'm at right now, um, speaking and trying to teach God's word and yet going through my own troubles. Um, that's when the truth is really so important. And that's when, when, it t when he tells us that the truth will set you free. It's, tr it's truth. You know, when we keep our secrets, they just get ugly and ferment. But when we're really willing to speak them is when God can come in and heal them and, and mend them. So um, I just, I've dealt with anxiety for, my mom said, since I was in high school. Uh, I don't, you know, in high school, you don't know what you have it when you're in high school. <laughs> it's just kind of a mental case. But anyway, she said, I've always, you know, had anxiety. But I, I just, like, fight through it all the time. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'll be fine. Um, finally, though, when my son, my oldest son was 16, and he was going to start driving, and he had to drive over Mark West, that really curvy road, to get to Santa Rosa. Hi, oh, dear. So glad you're here. I just started. Um, and so he was coming, or, or I started having major anxiety, just the fear. Now, fear is always from the enemy, always. So, you know, once you can acknowledge that, then you at least know who you're dealing with, who has no authority in your life. So it's up to us whether we take him on, get rid of him, or allow him to continue to just get at you and accuse you. Because we were talking about tonight, he's the accuser of the brethren. Brethren means any of the believers. He will accuse you, falsely accuse you, tries to break you down, tries to remind you of your old guilt that Jesus died on the cross for, but he tries to remind you of it. He tries to put in fears, anxieties, and worries all the time. But Jesus wants them healed. So that's why it's so important with this class, I believe, when I went through, through what I did this week, is that... The Holy Spirit really showed me that, especially we as women, we have such tender hearts. 
you know, we need to be healed from the inside out. And so, gosh, this make me cry. <laughs> so this week, you know, I just was, I was suffering with this anxiety. Okay, let me jump back. So when my son was 16, so that was 12 years ago, um, I just, I kept avoiding any type of antidepressants because I am super Christian and I have God and I shouldn't have to do that, you know. And um, I tell you, God is so good. When he wants you to have an answer to something, he will find someone to give it to you or a book that you'll read or a song that you'll hear, something. He'll get the message to you. But I was in St. Helena and there was a box with free books in it and there was this book and it had said something about God. So I thought, well, I might, you know, it's free. I might as well try it. <laughs> Came home. It changed my life. It was written by Sheila Walsh. And I don't know if any of you know Sheila Walsh. I love Sheila because she's so honest to the core and she so she was a main speaker for the 700 club I don't know if many of you remember that it was on for years and years and years so for five years she was one of the main speakers on that on that show she was fi fighting major clinical depression through the whole five years but she, you never knew it because she was put together so nicely and she smiled and you never knew it inside she said she was so broken and so hurting and so torn apart and fragile but yet it wasn't for any one reason it was just a culmination it wasn't what the things were going on around you I mean yeah there's sometimes when we have major situations but when my son was going through his drug addiction trouble I mean that's a major thing that's right in your face that's a different situation. But when you're just living with a darkness and a heaviness that seems to want to hang on you all the time for no reason, that's one that's there that the enemy is truly working on that I believe is from something or, or more than one thing of wounds that you've been carrying that he has, he has gotten his grips into and he triggers it with different things. But you never quite get it because it's from so long ago, most times, that we can't figure it out. But God does. So in this book by Sheila Walsh, she was explaining how she finally, she did her show one morning and went straight to a therapist, told him that she was having suicidal thoughts, and he immediately admitted her. You know, because you have to. And as a therapist, if, you're, if someone's having suicidal thoughts, she went in and she said she was put pretty much into it. wasn't a straight jacket, but she said it was like they took every piece of your cosmetics away. Every, I mean, she said she couldn't even have like a, a skin moisturizer, nothing that you could possibly either ingest or kill yourself with, you know, nothing. So she said it was the darkest time of her whole life. And she said the worst part was admitting it to people who knew her as Miss Super Christian on this show for so many years because it looked like she failed and it looked like God failed. And she said that's what bothered her the most and that was where the guilt came from is looking like God fails. When we think, gosh, we're Christian, we can't be sharing that we're sick or having anxiety or all these other things because... God's supposed to be healing me, so it's either I'm weak or God doesn't do it. And so what kind of what kind of example then am I for someone else? So when I read her book, was exactly the timing that my son was starting to do the drive over the hill. She was talking about how she she finally knew that she had to take antidepressants. She had gone through the part of living her five years or even much years many years before that of um you know, praying and going to God. So she knew she had already done all of that. When you've done everything and got, gone to God first, because that's most important, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be added unto you. But just seek him first. And then he will draw you or lead you into some other path that you need to be on. Well, my path was with this book with Sheila Walsh that said it was okay to take antidepressants. That was like my go-to permission slip. It was the weirdest thing, but it helped me so much. And so I even took the name where she was taking Zoloft. It's like, okay, this is what I want. Sheila Walsh is taking Zoloft. I can take Zoloft. So I went, you know, and it was wonderful. It saved me, I felt like. 
I mean, it really did. So then I was on that for, gosh, a long time, probably almost seven or nine years. And then there was a point when I weaned myself off because I wasn't going through anything critical in my life any longer. And, um, and then I was good, you know, but there's some critical things going on in my life right now, but not, but it's only in my own anxiety, mind, fear that I've allowed the enemy to work it into because it's really not like my sons have, have bought this big piece of property. They're in escrow. They're 25 and 28 years old. They're in escrow buying a house up in Nice by um, Clear Lake there. And they bought property and then have investors and they're going to be the, one of the first, um, uh, permitted marijuana growers for medicinal. That's what they're doing. Now that's even hard for me to spit out because I don't really want people to know that, you know, but that, so that's become my big anxiety. And so right now as I'm confessing it to you guys, I'm suddenly seeing God showing me that that's one of my biggest hangups right now. And that's why I've been dealing right now with such anxiety for this week is because they're on a path they They even have a doctor working with them who does only medicinal marijuana strains because they want only the best for what the majority of people deal with, which is depression and anxiety. I mean, so they, they have a good goal, but it's one of those goals that not all people are going to understand and it's looked down on a lot. And so suddenly it affects me, I feel like. So what each of us have in our own lives are triggers. So see, the enemy has watched you and me, and he knows the things that are triggers with us. He knows that my sons, because I've had difficulties with them or because of my own expectations and not trusting God and not letting them go and letting God be their father and take care of them because they are adults. Um, But the enemy knows that. He knows I don't do that very well. So that's when he comes in and he uses exactly those things to get to you and work you over. And so I was having this last week because I, they were just really explaining everything to me and they were really excited. I mean, they are just on a path that they feel motivated about. And it just, it was a trigger that just triggered me so bad. So I was like feeling such anxiety. I was getting tremors. I have this tremor, anxiety tremor that, that I'm confessing to because I hate confessing things like that. And I don't even want to say I have it. I'm fighting it because I told you guys last week, do not say I have it. It's not yours to have. It's the enemy. He works on you. He tries to put it on you. We have to just say I'm fighting it. I'm not having it. So I've been fighting it. It's been fighting, I've been fighting it for a long time and we get tired. You know, we just get tired. But we can't give up. Jesus didn't go to the cross for us to give up. He went to the cross so we could be more than conquerors while we're living on the earth. He went to the cross so that we would be free of all those things that he listed in Isaiah 53, plus way more that it goes through in the Bible telling you what we have as born-again believers. But the important word is born-again believers. Do we believe it? Do we believe it? Do we stand in the authority that we have and use the name of Jesus out loud with our words? Do we keep our words always lined up with life? Or do we just take on the negative and we speak the negative into our own lives so it just comes right back into our lives and becomes truth? Because that's where the division is of whether you're going to be healed of things or not. Whether you believe it And you speak it with the life words and the promises that God has given you so that it will become real in your life because it it won't come back void. Your words will not. They will come back to you. And you want the life. You want everything that God promises you in his word. You want all the promises. You want when it says that every one of his promises is yes and amen. He means it. He means every single thing that I promise in my word, I say yes to and amen, which means it is finished. So be it. But it's up to us. So, okay, so go back again to um, this week. So I just was feeling in a not so good place. 
we went to Las Vegas on Wednesday of last week. My days start becoming a blur. We went on Wednesday. We were meeting some friends to go to a car show. My husband loves the auto shows. There was a big, huge one in Vegas. And then we were going to go see Elton John. And I don't gamble at all. I did when I was in my 20s. It's not worth losing the money, so... I'm not, you know, there's a lot better ways. You tithe, you'll get money back a lot better, faster than, <laughs> than if you gamble. So uh, so we were there, and I, it's one of my best friends I've known for 33 years who I travel, we go on vacations with. And I'm the, I'm the super Sally, happy, smiley person, you know. Inside, I was just feeling like I was fractured. I mean, just really fractured inside. Like, I am so anxious that I just really don't want to be alive. Not suicidal thoughts, that I don't want to take my own life, but that I just don't. It's like, God, why don't you just take me right now? Because I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to think about if my boys are going to be okay. I don't want to think about whether my new dog is going to poop on the carpet. My husband's going to get mad, which even as that was adding to my anxiety. I mean, I just, I don't want to think about any of it. So just take me. And so I'm, I'm living in this little bubble of only I know that I'm feeling this way, spending time with you know, my husband and this other couple. And then on about the third day we're there, um, not long after my husband and I got married, he bought me a beautiful sapphire and diamond bracelet. I mean, beautiful. It's like a tennis bracelet. So it's all the way around. And it had all this special meaning. And he told me there were two diamonds or four diamonds, whatever. There was a certain amount of diamonds that was for the seasons of the year. There were a certain amount of sap sapphires for the days. And it was everything to show you how much I love you. I lost it in Vegas. I lost it in Vegas. And, um, you know, I, I put it on, and we were getting ready to go out, and it had like a double fastener, and I passed it. It's real hard to fasten. So I asked him if he would, he was just getting in the shower, and I said, can you fasten this? And he looks at me like, can you wait a minute? You know, wait until I get out. Well, so I only fastened it past what, halfway. And then I forgot, and then he forgot. So I lost it somewhere. Somewhere. So, um Oh, my goodness. And it was the same night we were going to the Elton John concert. So I got to the concert. I just kept trying not to cry because I just, I was just, I was not sick. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop myself right there because I caught myself every time I wanted to talk about it with my girlfriend or my husband. I always wanted to say, I just am so sick inside about it. No, I caught myself. One time I said the word sick to, to one person, and immediately in my heart, in my mind, I said this straight-up prayer, and I said, God, I rebuke that word. And so I said, I am so, so sad about it, because I was sad about it. I wasn't sick, and I don't need to put on that sick onto myself, but I was sad, and we can be sad. Do you know that when it says, you know, to mourn with those who mourn and to rejoice with those who mourn, I mean, we do rejoice with those who are rejoicing, you know, and it tells you all those things. It doesn't say be sick with those who are sick. Never says be sick with someone who's sick or be sick in general. Just never, ever, never, because you are not supposed to. So I'm watching my words in the middle of feeling just like crud and just, just saying I'm so, so sad. And... Then I'm sitting in this concert, and I'm thinking, how many people have lost their homes? It's just like God just gave me perspective also. What's this little piece that means a lot to me and was so sentimental to me, but yet those who have lost, like, everything. My, my one friend who I just love dearly, she lost everything except the clothes off her back. That's it. And, and so I that came through my mind, too. But the enemy took it. And I sunk deeper because it was like, then I felt guilt. And that's exactly what he wants. Oh, guilt. I'm missing my little bracelet for someone who lost their whole house. So now I feel guilt. So now I feel really crappy. So now I just feel worse. And sitting in that concert, I got deeper and darker into my place of, I really don't want to be alive. I really don't want to be alive. I can't, and I remember, I mean, I had all these words, terrible words. I can't do this anymore. I can't teach classes anymore. I just can't do this anymore. And it, it was, I mean, it was deep, and I didn't pull myself out, and I didn't, I just stayed in it. I just stayed in it, and sometimes we were going to do that. 
And sometimes we do do that. But the important thing is you don't stay in it forever. You can do your time just like it says there's a season for things. But then you rise up out of that season and you rise up out of the ashes and you become someone beautiful and you use what God let you go through or what you did go through to bless someone else and to speak life into someone else. So important. So today I was still feeling just not good. And so I was going on a walk with my older son's girlfriend. She's a sweet, beautiful heart she has. And so I was telling her a story. Now I'm going to jump to another story. But it all fits together the way God fits us together and wants all these little pieces. He wants to fit them all back together and, and heal them. You know, those pieces may always be broken, but they are a healed broken. They make you who you are, but you, you go through them because they are part of who you are, but who's, that makes you who you are, but now you can use them to give God glory in them. And so I'm telling her and walking along and telling her how I've just been feeling so anxious, told her about my bracelet, told her pretty much everything I told you, and then I got to all of a sudden... I don't even know why I went there, but I said, I want to tell you this story that I, that I feel like God put in my heart about two weeks ago about my younger son, Parker. Uh, Parker is my young, is the younger one who had gone through some drug addiction rehab. We thought he was going to die when he was 20 years old. And some of you, you already know this story. And uh, I mean, that was one of those times in my life. I didn't want to live, you know, it's the same. And so I was sharing that I felt like God showed me about two weeks ago when we went to the veterinarian, the three of the two boys and me, and we had little boxer puppies and they needed to get their tails cropped. And I mean, that sounds gross and it really is kind of gross when you think, but when you have purebred boxers, nobody wants one with a big long tail. So we're going in to get their tails cut. Parker's only about seven and Tanner's 10. And the vet, he just was pretty rude. And he said, you know what? I don't want to do this, but if we're going to do it, each one of you has to hold a puppy while I cut off its tail. And so I did nothing about it. I didn't say no. I, did, I think he just caught me so off guard. I'm like, okay. I mean, so Parker, who has a super sensitive, tender heart, he, they cut off this puppy. He drops the puppy. The puppy ends up getting hurt. And so the puppy has to come in for shots for pain. And, and so this was about two weeks ago that this story came into my heart. So I'm sharing this with Kenzie now. And I said, I said how I felt like I didn't defend them, my sons. I should have done something. I also felt like God was showing me that I, I had a huge amount of bitterness and unforgiveness still for this veterinarian which was so interesting to me because God will show you things, but pay attention, pay attention. When a little story comes into your mind, maybe even years ago and you're like, well, where did that come from? If you're saying to yourself, well, where did that come from? It's either from the enemy or from God. And oftentimes it's from God and he's trying to get to the root of something that's still messing with you. So I allowed God, I said, what is this story? And I knew the bitterness and forgiveness. So I just right away just said, God, I forgive that man. Bless him. Because it says to bless your enemies. Bless him and just change my heart. So by this end of the afternoon, I was free of that. But I still had that little feeling in my heart about, gosh, why didn't I keep that from happening? So I'm sharing this with Kenzie. And all of a sudden she said, and she says it very, she's so sweet. Do you think maybe you have some guilt? I'm like, oh, crud. Yeah, I have tons of guilt about this way back then. I still have that. And last week, I had just shared with my husband. I just said, I feel so guilty about, like, everything. And he was like, what? What's wrong with you? I was sharing earlier. I said he probably was wondering if I was sharing an affair or something, you know, because... <laughs> you have so much guilt it was like but I just said everything I feel like I'm guilty about how I raised the boys I mean dumb little silly things I'm just I feel guilty about what I said to someone yesterday I felt guilty because I didn't call the person I felt like I should have called I just feel like I'm one big bundle of guilt 
And that's where the enemy works more than anything else. And you know, when she said that to me, it was a light bulb went off though. That I thought, it is. It is guilt. And the enemy is just hanging on because he's an accuser. He accuses you all the time. Why did you do that? You shouldn't have done that. What were you thinking? Everything's ruined because of you. You'll never get over it. You're never going to have the, all the blessings that God wants to give you because of what you did. And man, I've lived like that. I've lived, I've lived like that. And I, I just thought, you know what? I'm sharing this message because I don't want any of us to live like that. And we don't have to live like that. Because one of the things that Jesus specifically died for on the cross was guilt. So we need to stand against that. And we need to say, no, if, if God shows you something and you haven't asked for forgiveness for it yet, then you ask for forgiveness for it. But then it's done. It's done. He doesn't want you one more time to bring that up to your, to your mind and feel, feel guilt again about it. Never again. And that's the beginning of healing of wounds. So we have to take our own authority in the name of Jesus that when we became new creatures, Every single day, we're a new creature with Christ. Every single day, you wake up in the morning, you are alive, you are breathing, because he has chosen still that you are to be alive and be doing something on this earth. If he didn't think that, you'd be gone. But every day, you wake up because God has a purpose for you to speak something into someone, to love someone who isn't being loved. You know, and, and to accept what Jesus did for you on the cross so that you can be that whole, well body, emotionally and physically able to go out there and be who God created you to be. And, you know, it's our actions that are just as important as our words. So we don't have to feel like, oh, my gosh, I have to be on a street corner and saying, you know, Jesus is my savior and you need to change your mind. It's not about that. It's about your actions. Love people. Give a minute of the day. It'll take you 30 seconds maybe to say, hi, how are you doing? My husband is the most beautiful example of that. Everywhere. And sometimes I'm in a hurry and I'm like, really? We really have to stand here and talk to the barista gal because, you know, but he does. He says, and he, one of his key line, lines is, are you staying out of trouble? And it's like, they're always so shocked, you know, are you staying out of trouble? And, but he just talks to people. Talk to someone. Do you know how much just that little bit of communication can make someone smile? Because you're showing that you care. You're showing that you care. But you have to start from getting your wounds healed. You can't love other people until you love yourself. And you won't love yourself until you love until you know how incredibly you love you're incredibly loved you are by your father. And if, once you get that, once you know that Isaiah 53 is absolute truth, that everything that God had his son go through on the cross is because it's absolute truth, then you'll start to realize how much he loves you. You'll be able to love yourself and you'll be able to love each other. Okay, so I'm going to do this real quick. So hold on. Okay. We'll see. Okay, so that is the end of that message. And just be paying attention for part two. And I'll just end with prayer. Dear Father, I just thank you for whoever might have listened to this message. I pray, God, that you touch their hearts. I pray, God, that if they're dealing with anxiety, depression, heaviness, Lord, that they really know who they are in Christ, in your Son, and that they stand against that in the name of Jesus. Give them the strength that they need and speak into them. And I pray also that they would take time to spend time with you so that you can reveal those deep wounds that still may be harboring there and causing this anxiety and depression. So Lord, I just give you the glory and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.